from this word. It's been really, really good. So he's going to continue on with that this morning. And he's, he's ready. Woo, he's ready. Amen. So uh, let's just stretch your hands this way. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We ask you to bless it. We pull nuggets and wisdom and revelation out of this man of God that we can apply to our everyday lives. And I, I give you glory, praise, and thank you for what you're doing in the name of Jesus right now. And just let your will be made known this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Good day. How many of you have been mauling over what we've been talking about in this series called Bitten, Not Beaten? How many of you have been mauling over what we've been talking about in this series, Bitten, Not Beaten? Again, how many people have been mauling over what we've been talking about in this series, Bitten and Not Beaten? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe we're on part four. Um, but honestly, you can go part one all the way to part 30 is probably what I'll have, but we're not going to do that many. So you're, you're safe. Um, but the whole Word of God goes together. It's one big series. I've never seen something intertwined the way the Word of God does. Have you? I mean, he'll take me on one topic, and then eventually, if I spend enough time on it, and I get it inside of me, he takes me, and it just weaves right into something else. Amen. One part of the word does not do away with another part of the word. It all complements each other. Amen. So I've had fun preaching this series because I know in life, I've lived long enough that I know everyone in this room has been bitten by something. Circumstances, losses, abuse situations, relationships, someone dropped you, someone kicked you, someone spit on you, someone lied on you. Someone did you wrong. Someone did you dirty. Amen. You got some kids that are, that are acting crazy. Come on, somebody. You, you, got, you got family members that are maybe acting crazy. You may have family dynamics that's going on that's not healthy. And I believe everyone that's lived any kind of time has been bitten by this thing called life. Amen. And, and how many of you know that you can't expect God to keep you from getting bitten? That's not the promise. The promise is that no weapon formed against you he didn't say, I'll, I'll, I'll not let a weapon be formed against you. He said, no weapon formed against you. That is, formed against you will prosper. That's our promise. And he didn't say that no one will talk bad about you. He said, every tongue that rises up against you to condemn. Come on, somebody. That's the heritage, a.k.a. the possession of sons and daughters of God, that no matter what comes against us, the gates of hell shall not, someone say, shall not, shall not. prevail against his church. How many of you know that's not just a building? Someone raise your hand if you're the church. So the gates of hell shall not prevail against whom? You. How many of you remember last week we said God doesn't keep you from the fire? He keeps you through the fire. He never promised you you wouldn't be thrown into a furnace. But he promised you, I'll be there with you when you're in it. And if we would settle some of these things, I, I use the word settle because, you know, some things have to settle down in our lives, right? Like we have to come to the end part. I like to call it the conclusion. We, we have to come to the conclusion that life is not roses and, and we're not going to be tiptoeing through it and just... You understand, you're not going to have a job at the bookstore, as Dr. Brian used to always say, and play harp all day and hear Christian music all day. Like the light, how many of you are light? He said you are the light of the world. The light goes to the darkness. We like to stay in the salt shaker. So we're together, we're all in the, in the salt shaker. The salt shaker is just a vessel to get the salt out. We like to rub up against salt. We don't like to get on anything that's decaying, but that's what salt's for. Salt is for decaying. In the old times, before there was refrigeration, before there was freezers, before we had 24-7 access to food, they used salt. They actually, it was actually monies. It was a currency. 
They bartered with salt. Salt was, was so vital to their way of life. So he's not saying that you're the Mortons, the cheap salt, the great value. You're what preserves the decaying in the world. How many of you can see there's some decaying in the world? Well, anytime there's sin, there's going to be decaying. The Bible says that the wages of sin are death. We are called to be the salt of the world. So we got to get outside the shaker. How many of you are ready to get outside the shaker? But we have to settle some things if we're going to do this the way God wants us to do it. We have to blow up some misconceptions. We have to blow up some wrong belief systems. How many, how many of you know just because you think you're right doesn't always mean you're right? Because most people in life go around their life. I, I, haven't, very, I haven't seen very many people walk around life every day and just tell people, you know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. You know I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Like, I, I, I hardly ever hear anyone say I'm wrong. We live according to our belief systems. If those belief systems are not matching up with the Word of God, we've got to go back to square one. We've got to tear some things down and build some things up that, that's going to sustain us through this walk. Isn't it funny how Christians, all of us in this room, can minister the truth of it's not going to be easy. But a lot of people in this room freak out when it isn't easy. See, if you're doing that, you have not settled. You have not come to the conclusion that it is going to be hard. And when it's hard, I'm going to, I'm going to predetermine. I'm going to predecide. I'm going to decide now that when it gets hard, I'm going to choose to just do it hard. We'll preach to someone, now listen, as soon as you get saved, there's a bullseye on your back. I played ball. I never guarded someone that wasn't in the game. Coach never assigned me to anyone that didn't, wasn't on the court playing. I was never assigned to someone on the bench. They were no threat to us. They were no threat to us, amen? And so we say these things, we know these things in our heart, but we oftentimes know them for other people. Because when it hits us, we lose our minds. Listen, I could say, I, I could preach for one minute, we'd go home. And, and, this, and this is the truth. God is good. Well, tell me more about God. God is good. How many of you have seen that God's good in Paul's situation? God, he don't do it the way you want. He'll oftentimes not be on your timing. But God is good. And I believe that we downplay the fact that God is good. See, when you come to the, to the conclusion that God is good, it really doesn't matter what's going on in your life because you understand it's not really about you anyway. Like our whole job is to glorify God. That, that word means to resemble him. God wants us through trials, tribulations, tests, troubles, all the T's, to resemble the Father. If a third of the kingdom is peace, why, why don't Christians have peace? If a third, listen to me, if a third of the kingdom is joy, can, can, would you agree with me there's a lack of joy in the house? I'm not saying you directly. You may have it, but can you say collectively there's a possibility that there's a lack of joy. I'm not talking about when we meet and when we shout and when we hear the music and when we're sharpening one another. I'm talking about when you go home. The joy, listen, God is good. It would take eternity to figure out the depth and the width of the goodness of God. Your circumstances right now may not be good, but God is good. How many of you know I bet Paul held on to the real goodness of God in Acts 28, verses 1 through 6? Let's go to Acts 28, verses 7 through 10. Let's get to the second part of it. Because a lot of people read this all collectively, but there's a first part. He had to do the first part right before... Sometimes the problem will come before the promise. 
And if you don't handle the problem right, you won't get the promise. Wow. Come on, somebody. Now, for those of you who have, haven't been here, uh, 1 through uh, chapter 28, which is the last chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 6, we find Paul shipwrecked at the island of Malta. That's what's going on. And then we continue. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island. Sometimes God will use your troubles to promote you, to get you hooked up to network with, with someone that can get you further Amen. than what you could have before your troubles even came. Like the goodness of God, like I, I, I think it, I've heard it so much. Do we really understand the goodness of God? Do we really, like we have to understand that. Like if you really understand the goodness of God, you will be less apt to freak out when something happens. Because the goodness of God is not situational. It is not circumstantial. You can't change the goodness of God. He can't be anything but good. Wow. Bible says that all good and perfect things come from above. Yeah, come on. So in that region there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius, excuse me who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. They also honored us in many ways, and when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. This is after verses 1 through 6. This is after Paul enduring the bite. The healing came after the attacks. How many of you know when Jesus said, let's go to the other side? And the disciples were freaking out, right? We understand there's a man, the man of the Gadarenes, broken. How many of you know the storm came before the healing? It will not go uncontended. Satan wants your land. Satan wants your land. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will what? Heal their land because there's someone coming after your land. There's someone trying to, to rake your land through the coals. There's someone trying to rob. John 10, 10, come on. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen? We have got to understand the goodness of God. Paul just kept going. I, if you hear anything today, man, you've got to keep going. Paul kept going. Don't quit. Would Paul have been justified many times over if he took a time out and said, I don't want to do this anymore? In today's standards, he had a whole lot of justification. And there would have been a lot of people that would go up and put his, their, their hand, their arm around Paul and say, I understand why you quit. I, I see how hard it was. Amen? He kept going. In six verses, we have escaped a shipwreck alive. Praise God, right? See, some of us would be... <laughs> Even though we're alive, we'd be, be, we would be complaining about the wreck. No, no, no. See, remember, you've got to understand the goodness of God. The goodness of God, yeah, he, he, he came to the, the island on a piece of driftwood, but he was alive. I'm looking at people in this room that's still alive. Quit looking at the wreck. Quit looking at the bite. Quit looking at all the who's in Whoville trying to mess you up. God said, I will not let them overcome you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Escaped a shipwreck alive. Praise God, right? Was in rough waters of a storm on probably a piece of driftwood for, for a day or two. Praise God, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Lands on an island with cannibals and found favor to the point they built a fire for them to live. Because he was wet and cold. Praise God, right? Amen. 
<laughs> Paul doesn't, I, I can sit down right here. Paul doesn't sit around and let them build the fire for him. The, the Bible says when Paul got up to gather sticks to help. Wow. See, you can't help someone and ain't willing to help theself. You know, he was the only one that was shipwrecked sitting around the same fire that was willing to get up and actually put something on it. I could preach a whole sermon right there in that verse. I won't because I don't have time and it's not my sermon. <laughs> Paul didn't sit around and say, don't you know I've been in prison? Don't you know I've been shipwrecked? You do something for me. They built him a fire, and he started gathering a bundle of wood to help preserve. My God, somebody say amen. Someone say, I got to do something. No, you understand the times we live. We in America, this right here, the handout, <laughs> you can't sit and expect everyone else to build a fire for you. You can't expect everyone else to sit and gather sticks for you to keep that fire that they did build for you initially to keep going. You have to protect the fire. You've got to gather. Come on, somebody. The daily manna, they had to go out every day and get it and eat it because it would rot overnight. They weren't living on yesterday's leftovers. They had to get up out of their tents and go fetch the manna for food. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm getting into another message. He didn't sit around and waiting on people to help him. He gets up and starts to gather firewood. Praise God, right? To only get bit by a viper because the heat from what was keeping him alive. Praise God, right? As the viper was hanging from his arm, he gets judged as a murderer. Praise God, right? Paul flings off the viper, off his arm, into the very thing that brought the viper out to play in the first place. Praise God, right? To have people now eyeballing you just to watch you drop dead from the venom. Praise God, right? To people now seeing you live when you shouldn't, and now they calling you a god. Praise God, right? <laughs> to now being used through all of this to heal one man to eventually heal the whole village. Praise God, right? You, you, can't, you can't bypass this process called life. It's going to happen to you. And he gives us promises to get through. Some of you just got, some of you are going to hear that for the rest of your life. Praise God, right? Praise God, right? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to praise in all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to, um, I want to go to Romans 8, 28. I want to, I want to shift gears just for a second. I want, to, I want to sit down on a couple scriptures. I want to give you some word. I want to give you some food for, for thought. You get in your spirit. I want to break, I'll break a couple scriptures down. I want, I want to bring some understanding to you this morning before we continue with Paul's story. And the funny thing is, Paul wrote Romans. The same man that went through this storm in Acts 28 wrote the book of Romans. And then we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians, if you want to go ahead and mark that to chapter 5, I think, verse 18. And he also wrote the book of 1 Thessalonians. <laughs> You know how I see so much? I see power in Paul because of what Paul overcame. Amen. And he didn't do it on his own. I'm not saying self-help. I'm not saying Paul did it on his own. He did it on the power of the Holy Ghost. How many of you are thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost? Let's read. I really want to settle down here. I want to, I want to explain this to you like he explained it to me. Very good. How many of you know it's, it's vitally important that we understand the Word of God? Amen. The Bible says, in all you're getting, how many of you are getting a lot of things in life? How many of you have gotten a lot of things in life? How many of you still have a lot to get in life? He said, in all you're getting, get understanding. Get truth that you can stand under. Some people are standing under things that aren't truth. That's why they're getting wet. And we know. How many of you say, I got to know? I got to know. Not know of. Not know where I can quote it to you verbatim. I have to know it. I have to settle it in my heart. I have to come to the conclusion that I know this that all things, all things, someone say all things. Work together. See, sometimes the blessing and the bite will be in the same package. 
The blessing and the bite will be in the same package. All things work together for good, but this is conditional. I've never heard this preached like this before. He gave us, it's conditional. You want me to show you how it's conditional? To them who love God. You don't love God, all things aren't coming together for the good. It's conditional. Do you know the covenant of God says, if you, I will. You know how many things are conditional in the word of God? It did not say, as long as you accept Christ and you are saved and you can pull out your salvation card, this is going to happen. You have to love God. You have to love God. And then it says, to them who are called according to his purpose. This is the second condition. His purpose, not yours. See, some of you are called to your purpose. All things are not going to work together for the good of those who are just doing their purpose. I, I don't know how people miss it. There, there's two conditions upon this scripture being true and alive in your life. You don't love God and you're not doing it according to his purpose, this, this voids it. I read the word of God like that a lot lately because a lot of it, I, I see that, if you, I will. And, and, and the funny thing is, really, where we are right now, if you, I already have. If you, I already have. But just because I already have don't mean you're going to live in it. If you believe. <laughs> How many of you remember last week we were talking about the word believe and how deep believe really goes? It's isn't it easy to just, I believe, until something bad happens, which tells on itself you don't believe. Because believing should not be conditional, it should not be based on good happenings. In fact, real believing needs to be present in bad happenings because it's really easy to believe when everything's good. How many of you were drawn to fast really, really long or pray really, really hard when everything's great? He'll use the fire to draw you closer. If these two conditions are not met, then all things will not work together for the good. How many have ever seen that before? How many have ever seen the two, two conditional statements? We like to say the first part, all things work together for the good, brother. We get churchy real quick, don't we? All things, like we know what it's saying. All things work, it's okay, all things work to them who love God. It, it didn't say to them who come to church. To them who love God, and to them according to His purpose, who are called according to His purpose. His purpose. How many of you can say, I'm living a life according to His purpose? Because this is one of the conditions. Ah, come on. I, I'm showing you a promise that belongs to us, but we got to meet the conditions. Amen? Amen? Listen, even the gift of salvation has a condition. You have to believe and you have to confess. Romans 10, 9. Just because he didn't don't mean you have it. Just because God did it don't mean we have it. Just because he did it don't mean I have it. Come on, somebody. Now, all things, great, good, Bad and worse. All things. Pleasant, unpleasant. Favorable, unfavorable. All things. It also includes every person. All things include every person. Because how many of you know the who's is what messes up, up a lot of times? That's why Paul wrote so, so he wrote, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. He wanted you to understand that you're going to see the who. 
But God's way is to not see the who. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That's who we're fighting. You know how you win this fight? Get on your knees. And you know what your ammunition is? The Word of God. You don't fight any other way. You go ahead and get in that ring. You think you're better than the devil? You think you still don't have buttons? You think you've arrived? You think you've fulfilled all the obedience? You're going to get taken out, honey. I promise you. And you say, man, that don't sound right in the house of God. Do it without, do it without doing it the way God told you, and you are going to be taken out. Jesus Christ himself stayed on his knees and said, it is written. Your ammunition is, it is written. Not, I'm a Christian. It is written. I, I just see, it is written. That's your ammunition. Okay, we know that. When's the last time you've had a problem and you've used your ammunition? When's the last time you have settled this in your heart that this is truth? And when something comes up, you say, it is written. Wow. See how easy it is to hear this stuff and just let it go in one ear out the other and not apply it? Wow. Hallelujah. Are you with me? The cleanest translation I could find, which meaning in the original language, for good, we know that all things work together for good, is actually the word best. It's actually the word best. Everything we meet in life, everything, everything without any exception works together for our best. Why are you tripping? I ask myself the same things because I'm not going to just assume that everyone in here rides real high when the storms come. We like to run our mouth, don't we? We get angry. We're emotional people. Sometimes your IQ, your, your intelligent quotient can be real high, but if your EQ is low, if your emotional quotient's low, you will not live a successful life. You know how many people I've seen brilliant minds be broke? Because a third of us is soulish. And if you don't tame that soul, I'm not going to say tame because you, you tame the flesh, you kill the flesh. If you don't transform that soul, if you don't wash that soul with the water of the word, then more than likely you will be conformed to the world. How silly would it be to know you have the victory but you never use it? God says it must be this way, why don't we do it? This is, I'm not saying things are just going to go smooth. What I'm saying is most of the time things won't go smooth and God has your back all the way, but you have to do your part. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't believe one day and not the next. That's the battle, right? Faith, being faithful, believing in good, bad, mountaintops and valleys. When money's there and when money's not, when cars are running good, when cars are not, when you even have a car or don't have a car, praise God. And I know this is foundational. I may be boring some of y'all, but if we don't get back to settling the truth in our hearts, we are not going to make it. Well, you going to do it on your willpower? Satan would love for you to fight him on your willpower. He would love for you to fight him any other way but the blood of Jesus Christ. He would rather you say anything to him, but it is written. I'm reminded in the book of Jude chapter 9 when the archangel Michael, some of you have heard me say this, but it's right here in this series. He was carrying out the body of Moses back to glory. Satan comes and wanted the body. I'm not going to go into the theology of why that was, but we, we know why it was. Michael, the, the highest ranking official underneath the Godhead. That's a bad dude. That's a bad dude. The man says, I dare not throw an accusation against you, Satan. The only thing he said is, the Lord rebuke you. Who do we think we are? 
Oh, I know we're sons and daughters, don't get, but don't, don't you play that. You get in that ring and start throwing your own punches, and you'll get knocked out. Michael didn't even, did not dare rail an accusation against Satan. He's a worthy foe. He's defeated, but he, isn't it funny? How can you be a worthy, defeated foe? Because we allow him. Because there's a will involved. Oh, he's not a worthy, def, worthy foe. He's just a defeated foe to God. He should be just a defeated foe to us. But we don't understand enough to fight him correctly. Because as I told you before, he'll jab you in your finances. And you may have your finances on lockdown. And you get past that. But as soon as you get your head back from getting snapped from a nice sharp jab, he's hooking you in your marriage. And you might not have that one on lockdown. Then he'll uppercut you with your kids. He leaves no rock unturned. He's not coming to you like he don't know your buttons. Like he don't know what causes you to want to sin. He's been doing this how long? How long have you been alive? He knows humanity. He knows the flesh all too well. He tempted Jesus with it. And then he'll put you in a headlock and you'll start having mental problems. Don't think you're just going to outlast him when you're not saying it is written. It's called a sword for a reason. It's one of the only pieces of armor that is actually offensive. And I see the body of Christ taking a defensive stance. You can't win a game if you don't play offense too. You can have the best defense in the world and the best thing you can have is zero to zero. You'll tie. You can't win unless you put points on the board. Ah, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, if we believe this, this verse, Romans 8, 28, then 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 is also fulfilled in our life. And it reads, In everything give thanks. <laughs> All things work together for the best of those who love God and that are called by Him according to His, His, His purpose. And then he gives us, this is the same man that went through the book of Acts. This is the same man we read about in Acts 28. He wrote this also. He not only wrote Romans 8, 28, he wrote uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. I think Paul knew what he was talking about. Paul fought many of battles. I, I guarantee if I went to leadership in every church in America... One of the biggest hang-ups in the church, God-loving people, is when problems hit their shores. Is when problems hit their... Problems are going to crash on your shores. Settle it. You can't stop the bites from coming. You can't stop the ships from wrecking. But God is with you. You will come out finer. You can't stop the furnace. You can't stop the fire. You can't stop the heat. He's refining us. There's no refining if everything's fine. Hallelujah. I'm passionate about this because this is the daily walk. This is part of the daily walk. You don't have these truths settled in your heart. You are going to be tossed to and fro, like the waves. Do you understand that even God said, Jesus said this, a double-minded man will receive nothing from God. Nothing. A wishy-washy mind. A believe today, doubt tomorrow. Isn't that the battle? We all have our circumstances. We all see numbers in the checkbook. We all have bills to pay. We all have a gas gauge. We all have cupboards at home. And it's usually okay when we see everything's okay. When the tank's full, we're good. When the light comes on, we freak out. The just shall walk by faith. 
If nothing ever concerned you, you wouldn't be in faith. If he kept you good and everything fine all the time, you wouldn't need faith. And my Bible says that the just, those who have been justified by the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ, have one thing. We, we walk by faith and not by sight. I could close. I could close. I kind of want to. Because if we don't get this, what are you going to get? No, no. What are you going to get? If we don't understand this daily battle that Paul knew oh so well, that's still relevant to today, the same devil that tried to kill Christ, that he thought he killed him, didn't he? If he really knew what was going on, if he knew the plan, he wouldn't have put him on a cross. Because putting on a cross bought us salvation. Hallelujah. The same devil that was messing with Paul, the same devil that was messing with Peter and James and John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, come on somebody, is messing with you today. You cannot bypass this. This is why I don't just like the blessing message. Who cares if you're blessed if your mind's jacked up? If you don't have the mind of Christ, if you don't have the kingdom of God, if you don't have the peace, the righteousness, and the joy, what do you have? How big of a house will get you to settle in where you're happy? How good can your kids act to keep peace in your heart? How much money in an account or accounts can satisfy you? If we don't, church, if we don't settle this, this is the battle, Jeff. We're not going to make it. Some people are barely making it now and persecution ain't even hit our shores yet. It's amazing how many people will tell me they'll die for Christ, but they can't live for him. Don't trick yourselves. It's time for the church to arise. We're the answer. We're the bride of Christ. We need to quit hanging out, uh, 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 passing out junk food to the body. We need to start getting back to the principles, the ABCs of Christianity, the stuff they preached back in the day. We need to get back to the stuff of faith. You have to believe. You have to endure. You have to persevere. Understand that it says in everything, not for everything. God don't expect you to thank him for everything. God don't expect you to thank him for cancer when it comes knocking on your door. But in cancer and through cancer, yes, he does. He demands the will of God is for you to thank him in and through it all. Let's, let's finish it. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, my friends. What's the will of God? That you continually give thanks. That thanks continually roll off your lips because there's something that happens in the unseen realm when we decide to trust and believe in God and not go by sight but go by faith and praise Him through it all. And you can't bypass that. You're going to go through some things. Listen, you have two choices in life. To go or grow. Everyone's going through something. Few are growing through the something. I told you last week, in, in, in all truth, the devil takes a high risk when he messes with you. Because if you choose to say it is written and you hold on to God, the promises belong to you and God will see you through. And that trouble, that trial, that test, that tribulation that came to destroy you can actually make you grow closer to God, Maddie. So he rolls the dice every time. He's banking on us. He's all in on the fact that they'll go by what they see. They'll go by what they feel. They'll go by what they hear. They'll go by what they taste. Come on. He gets the senses. He knows the senses. 
He'll get something concerning you. He'll, he'll test that belief system. That's why that belief system, I'm, I'm trying to articulate it correctly this morning. It's very hard to do because it's deep. It's got to go to the very core of our foundation and be settled, unmoved, like an oak tree by water. It's got to be firm. It, it can't be up, uh, plucked up when, it, when a little breeze comes, when a little offense comes, when a little test comes, when a little trial comes, when a little bit of tribulation comes. Going through things will make you bitter. Growing through things will make you better. And it's your choice. It's your choice if you settle to just go through them or to grow through them. Ah, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. Am I going to allow this to hurt my faith where I quit believing? Or am I going to allow this even though I, I don't understand God, I, I can't? When, when you don't have no sense of God, that's when faith arises. I wouldn't have to have too much faith if Jesus Christ was manifested right here in the flesh beside me. I would have to still believe in him, but I can touch him. I can hear him. The will of God for us is to, through everything, in everything, never stop giving thanks to God. That's your way out. Go back to your problems and start thanking God. That I can't, that's not a prayer line that's going to make them go away. Sometimes God will use that. But life happens, and life is very much choice-driven. And if you make wrong choices, you pay for them, even if you're saved. It's choice driven. What choice are you going to make today? Some of, are you bored? Some of you are looking like you're bored. Falling asleep on me, bored, am I boring you? You know, the Word of God can do it. I, I told Pastor Dennis, I said, you know, truth is like an ancient language, you don't hear it anymore. So when you really just get down to the foundational stuff that we should know, not only know, we should be doing, and we should see the fruit thereof in the church. Until I see the fruit from the tree of the ABCs, I'm going to keep preaching the ABCs. Yeah. Amen. This is how thankful we will be if we believe in Romans 8.28. If we believe in Romans 8.28... That if I'm loving God and I'm called according to his purpose, I'm doing it according to his purpose, and I'm not about my purpose, that everything, all things, bad, good, or indifferent, it doesn't matter what's happening to me, I'm promised they will work out for the best. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's kind of heavy, isn't it? Not in an aspect that you've never heard it before, it's heavy in the aspect you, got, you know right now you got to live that. That that's real easy to quote and easy to speak, but live it day in and day out because we're very attached to our soul, right? Like we're, we, we are emotionally aware. And we react more than we respond. Every time I've probably messed up in my life, I've reacted instead of responding. I've reacted. Instead of, it is written, responding. What if Jesus would have reacted to turn them stones to bread? The man was hungry. His senses were probably telling him, dude, you need it. Jesus didn't react. He responded. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is where a lot, I think a lot of people miss it. A lot of people who love God, a lot of Christians miss it. It's the fact that it's, it's, it's when everything was going so good. I just don't understand what happened. A furnace knocked on your door. There's some, still some things inside of you that he's got to get out. There's some purging of unclean that must come out of our hearts. 
Because man, you can trick man, you can dress up and you can look good and you can say all the right things. You can come up here and dance and praise God. You can pray in tongues. You can start prophesying. You can work in the gifts. They're without repentance. And God knows your heart. You can be far from it. You know? Paul had to go through all the first six verses before he could get seven through ten. As, as believers, we just want verses 7 through 10. Give me the healing. Give me the favor. Give me all the gifts. Give me all this stuff. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want prison. I don't want shipwrecked. I don't want the island. I don't want to get wet. I don't want to be cold. I don't want to starve. I don't want to get bit. I don't want to get judged, but I want the healing. Now, let me, let me give you another person. You think it's just Paul? Read your Bibles. Let's go to Joseph. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's go to Joseph. You, you, know, you know, I believe that, that many people would never have done what Paul did because many people would have, ne they would have started complaining at the prison. They would have never even got to the shipwreck. They wouldn't have made it out of prison. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not condemning. I'm not judging. But, the, but the, fruit, the proof is always in the pudding, right? If I don't see victory, then something's wrong. And, if, and, and listen, even if the victory isn't present yet, it ain't manifested yet, I should see the faith that it's already there. If I don't see the tangible evidence of your children getting worked out, if I don't see the, the, the tangible evidence of your court case getting worked out, if I don't see the tangible evidence of your vehicle getting repaired, I should still see a tangible faith that's proclaiming that these things are done, and you can't bypass that. The kingdom of God, as Dr. Brian has taught us for years, is voice activated. You be quiet, you'll die. You have to fight our ammunition. Listen, we have a big spiritual gun, man. We got the Holy Ghost. But it's only until you start speaking the word of God that you're shooting anything out of it. How ridiculous would it be just to say, I got a Gatling gun, I'm going to win, but I ain't got no bullets. I'm armed to the T, Matrix style. When he's walking up in the building, you understand what I'm saying? Trench coat off. I've got all these assault weapons. I got all this stuff. I got grenades, but I never. I don't have any. He's given us everything we need. Now this is good news today. I hope you're hearing me correctly. He's given us everything. Joseph. The pit came first. No, 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 no. Let me let me back out of. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The hate from his brothers came first. See, it's one thing someone hating you that you don't know. It's another thing, someone hating you that's family. <laughs> that bite hurts. <laughs> you know, you can shake off that one and you don't, really, you don't really have any relationship with them anyway. They don't have the end to your heart to hurt you. The, you understand? What I'm, but there's people that have an end to your heart that can hurt you real bad. And his brothers hated him, Scripture said. I'm pulling on the Holy Ghost here because I don't have no notes. I've read the story a thousand times. The, they hated him. Then they sell him out. They put him in a prison. They, they fake his murder. Some of us can't get past the hate of the brother. We don't even make it to the pit. We want the palace. We want the palace, but we can't get past the hate. We can't get past the pit. Then he finds favor. He finds favor with a, with a, with a leader. Okay? <laughs> you think the pit was enough? Was the hate from the brothers enough? Bitten, not beaten. Are you getting what I'm putting down? This, this goes all through the word of God. And it's still happening today. New Testament, new covenant right now. It's still happening today. He goes to the pit. He gets out of the pit. He finds favor. He starts running some things. Then he meets Potiphar's wife. He's like, I'm out of the pit, man. I'm promoted. I found some favor. I'm running some things for this dude's house. And then now Potiphar's wife comes with an accusation. He hit on me. He wanted to sleep with me. Now Joseph finds himself in prison. Was the hatred not enough? Was prison not enough? And then, because see, he got out. That would have been hard. First, you're in the pit. God gets you out of the pit. You, he gives you faith. And the Bible says, check this out. In the pit, the Bible says, and the Lord was with him. Oh, my God. Help me preach this, Holy Ghost. Help me preach. And the, what do you mean the Lord's with me in the pit? And the Lord was with him. And so they threw him in prison now. The man was innocent. The Bible says after two full years, two full years of innocence, 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Two full years of innocence they released because, because Pharaoh had a dream. And he went to the magi magicians and he tried to get someone to interpret the dream. But no one had the interpretation but the dreamer. And Joseph had it. And so Joseph's gifts gained him favor once again. What if he wouldn't have got past the hate? What if his heart, and the Bible says in prison, not just the pit, and the Lord was with him. Oh, man. What do you mean the Lord was with him? He spent two full years of innocence locked behind bars, and the God was with him? Would you not be upset? Would you not be freaking out? Some of you freak out two hours in there. Greg, would you not be freaking out, bro? Two, year, two full years and you're innocent? And he kept his heart right? And the Bible says the Lord was with him? The Lord was with him when he was in a pit? The Lord was with him when he was sold into slavery? The Lord was with him when he got lied on? The Lord was with him when he was in the prison? And he interpret his gifts, uh, 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 bring the interpretation to the dream? It saves it saves the whole country, and the very thing that could have took him out ended up being his household salvation. His family was spared because of Joseph. And the Lord was, I read that. And after two full years, and the Lord was with him. You tell me the Lord can be with you and you're in prison? You're not sitting in 70 degree climate controlled, food in the cupboards, everything good? I thought this thing was all about being blessed. This thing's about persevering. This thing's about giving glory, resembling God so that others can accept him. God will let you get bit sometimes publicly. How many of you know it's one thing to get bit privately? Paul got bit in front of people. They sitting around watching him. When's this boy going to fall out? I seen one snake bit him. That dude's dead. There's some people right now watching you. I know they got bit. Why are they still standing? They watch it. I said it last week, but I'm going to say it again. In closing today, come on somebody. The critics come out and play. And they always have more than their two cents to put in. You don't need to worry about the opinion of no one but your daddies. No one but God Almighty. No one but the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where you draw your identity from. Because sometimes your critics aren't always wrong. Sometimes they actually tell on you and you did do it. How many of you have been guilty of actually what your critics said you were guilty of and God still protected you? God still found a way to get you out. Christians act like they're always innocent. They called Paul a murderer. You know what? He was. Before Christ, he was. They were accurate, but they didn't know the new creation. They didn't know they could be brand new. So if you're brand new, God says you're a brand new who? You're a brand new who? Why are you going to take a label of someone else trying to put on you and, and, and let one mistake dictate your whole life? God said you're a brand new who? Who are you listening to? Sometimes the, the enemy don't even got to send the critics. Critics are funny because they only come on really bad days and good days. <laughs> no, 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 because that's what makes good news. They don't come on average days. That don't make for, for headlines. They come on the really good ones and the really bad ones because that's what makes good news. And they can only tell you what you've done, what you didn't do, or what you should have done. I call them Monday morning quarterbacks. <laughs> he shouldn't have thrown that pass. Buddy, you had a TV screen. You weren't on the field. You didn't see all the angles. You didn't feel the speed of the game. I would have thrown this pass. I wouldn't have thrown that. Are you serious? Are you ser I've seen you throw worse passes than that, honey. What do you mean under pressure? Oh, I wouldn't have thrown that. I can't believe he threw that to that guy. That guy wasn't even open. Didn't he see the double coverage? Maybe not. They can only tell you what you've done, what you didn't do, or what you should have done. Yeah. Come on, somebody. 
I'm a new man. Now, see, that's churchy too, right? Because you can hear it, you can, you can quote 2 Corinthians 5, 17, but until it becomes a part of you, until you settle it, come on, somebody. Does anyone ever get haunted by the enemy with thoughts about your past? Raise your hand, please, for me. Then I'm preaching the right message. Shake it off. I dare someone in this place who have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ to shake off the critics, shake off the headlines, shake off the mistakes, shake that stuff off. You're brand new. Don't let the enemy steal your future from keeping you in your past. If you want to go really, really fast, own it all. Own the small, own the medium, own the big. Go to God, confess it, and go on. Live on, man. Live on. Hallelujah. I sound like a motivational speaker right now. But I'm telling you, live on. I've, I've done it too long. I was too concerned about what people thought of me. That's why I punked out in high school. I, I wasn't me. I did those things. I ain't saying it wasn't me. That was my twin brother. That was, it was me, but it wasn't me. I don't know how many people always come up to me, man, you got a good heart, Jaeger. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm doing whatever feels right. I wanted to fit in. Can I be a, I'm a 42-year-old grown man. Can I be honest with you? I punked out. I wanted to be cool. This is why I preach to you the way I do, youth. Mighty, this is why I share the raw real with you. Because when you're not yourself, you fake. Even if you're a good fake, you're still fake. I'm called to be me. And I never could wrap my mind around because I'm always, I was always trying to compare myself to people that seem like they had more. I can't run with that dude because that dude's parents own this. They're going golf and I can't afford a putter. And I'd get my identity and what I didn't have. How many of you know that's a bite? Amen. Amen. See, I can preach this all year long. Because bite's got all kinds of names. Sometimes the bite's sin. The, let, me, let me go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The bite is anything you allow to attach itself to you for harm's sake. That's a bite. Anything that tries to attach itself to you for harm's sake is a bite. Wow. Come on, man. The bride of, I'm looking at the bride of Christ. I'm looking at sons and daughters. I'm, I'm, my Lord, do you believe? Do you believe? I know it don't. You think everything looks good at my house? You think every, everything looks good at Dr. Brian's house? We, don't, we can't go by that. I know we want something deeper than that, right? Well, give me, that's not real deep. I, you know. We can't continue until that's nailed down. It's like trying to build a house and you've got granite countertops, okay, and you, you've got marble floors and you've got, you've got all this stuff. You've got high dollar stuff, but your foundation stinks. No, I, because listen, when the store, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus said that you're likened unto a foolish man when you build your house on sand. It's only until you are a hearer and a doer. Huh. Do you hear what I'm saying? Some of the foundational truths that I've shared with you this morning, they seem redundant. Yeah, thank you, Captain Obvious. I already know that. But you're not doing it. You haven't settled it in the core of who you are. You know of being a new creation, but in your heart you're really not. You know that you can believe God, but in your heart when things get rough, you, you don't. And so those things have got to be settled out inside of us. Because trouble's coming. I'm not glorifying the trouble. I'm just trying to get you to settle that fact. You are going to have trouble in this life. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Praise me. I have overcome the world. Give me thanks. I have overcome the world. Hey, I tell you what, just believe me because I have overcome the world. Will you trust me? For I have overcome the world. Will you do it my way? Because I have overcome the world. 
Hallelujah. Who? Ah. Ah. I want to believe. No, I, I judge myself. I, I'm with me all the time. I know the little hiccups and the little roller coasters that's in my life. I want to believe, man. I, I, I want to, well, no matter what's going on, man. You may not ever see me do this, but I'm, I'd rather be steady than up and down. You may not say, whoa, he's going, but I want, he's solid. What a witness we are to people when we're solid. Yeah. Pastor Dave, solid, isn't he? Yeah. I've seen it firsthand. It's attractive, isn't it? You guys are so, I'm not, you understand what I'm just using the, 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 the apostle of the house. He's solid. Is he fancy all the time? No. Is he the greatest speaker in the world? Of course not. I think he's really, really good. But I mean, there's some great, you know, you understand what I'm, that's not demeaning. I'm just saying, is he, is he great at everything? Man, he is solid. That's what attracts. Because everybody can be like a little toot in the wind. <clears throat> Wherever the wind glows, there you go. It's amazing when you get around someone that's planted in a belief system. It draws people. You wonder why maybe you're not drawing people? Your light ain't bright enough. Your salt may have lost some flavor. It's been sitting in the shaker too long been rubbing up with other salt too long. All we want to do is hang out with Christians. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You getting anything? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to find a place to close here. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes the enemy don't have to send a critic your way. You're, 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 you're your own critic. Some, sometimes the enemy just let you go. They, he ain't even got to worry about you. He ain't got to sin nothing against you. He just knows life's going to happen, and you are going to beat yourself up. Criticize yourself. Not looking in the mirror, owning it. But sometimes we look in the mirror, and we own things that don't belong to us. Honey, you can't own nothing that don't belong to you. It's not yours. Amen. That's false burden. Amen. You are only called to own the things that belong to you. So sometimes the enemy just puts it on play. He ain't even got to bring nothing real big up because you're your own worst critic. Amen? Remember, he does not keep you from the fire, but he promises to keep you through it. How many of you are thankful that you've been through some fires and you're, and you're here? You're here. Let's quit focusing on the fire and let's quit focusing on the bite and let's quit focusing on the venom and let's start focusing on the promise and let's start focusing on the protection and let's start focusing on the fact that you are still here. Give God some praise. You've got two choices. Go through it or grow through it. I'm going to give you two more. Let it stay attached or shake it off. I, I, amen? I, I believe it's a word for this house. I do. That there are some things that have got to be shaken off before God's going to allow you to go into your next season. And that affects us corporately. When you pump the brakes and we're going forward, it affects the corporate. When I pump the brakes and you all are going forward, it affects the, the corporate. Do you understand what I'm saying? God wants you. He needs you to shake off some things that don't belong to you. Because I believe he's got great things. I believe I haven't even seen the, 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 the tip of the iceberg in this ministry. I haven't preached my best message yet. I haven't lived my best day yet. I haven't believed my hardest yet. I've got more to do. I've got to shake it off. I've got to shake it off. I haven't learned all there is to learn yet.
Shake it off. Don't let that thing hang on you. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what they posted in the newspaper about you. I don't care you've been on the front page of the news too many times. I don't care what you did last week. Shake it off. I don't say I don't care in the fact that I don't care. I, it's, it's irrelevant now. It's gone. I ain't going to hold it against you. God ain't going. If you own it, it's done. You may still have to pay the price for the decision a little bit, but it's done. I believe there's so much more. There's so much more. I believe there's so much more even just in the Sunday morning, Wednesday night church services. So much more. But I don't believe he's going to allow us all to get there until we cut some flesh off. They had to be circumcised before they crossed over. Some flesh had to be cut off. And some things had to fall and die before they crossed over. Will you allow God to cut some things off of you? Will you allow God to help you get the boldness? Life ain't over yet. Young, old, rich, poor, beautiful, ugly, skinny, fat, life ain't over yet. I've just begun. I've just begun. How about you? Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you. Oh, where would we be without you? Praise you. Lord, let us glorify you. Let people see Jesus in us. Let us resemble you. Holy Spirit, guide us in all truth. Teach us how to shake off the bites. Teach us to retrain the mind through the Word. Stir up a desire in the hearts of these people. For all the times they've made a little decision and they left and they forgot. And they, they've erred and they've, they've, they've said, you know, I really wanted it, but I, I wasn't really all bought it. Let, let them buy in today. Completely, 100% settle some things in the very core of their being. That your word is truth. It's truth. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the word that became flesh. Thank you for Jesus. Teach us how to carry our cross. Teach us that it's a daily battle. Teach us how to fight correctly that daily battle. Lord, let our, let our believing go deeper in you today. I thank you, Lord, through everything you're refining us. You're refining us. Just like Job. Whew. Name was no good. Animals dead. Children dead. Wife didn't like them. Friends telling him why. He said, I'm all right. God knows my way. And when he stood, I will be like pure gold. I'm all right. Even in the midst of those things, I'm fine. I'm right in the will of God. He knows my steps. He knows my ways. And when he's done with me, I will be like pure gold. to shine brighter in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Next week, I believe, we'll shift gears and I'm going to talk about how we fight. Talk about how we fight. Amen? Just a little bit before the battle is not yours. 
the battle is not yours. Amen. So we're going to learn how to fight and um, how, what Paul told us to do. Amen. There's some things that we have to do. Amen. One of them being resisting the devil. Amen. So, why don't you go over that? Why don't you go over James chapter 4? Everyone wants to do James 4 8. Draw nigh to God, and draw, God will draw nigh to you. Read what's before it. It's all talking about resisting, and sub, resisting the enemy and submitting to God. Read it in context. Read the text in context. Go read James chapter 4. And uh, we'll pick up next week. Amen. Hallelujah. If anyone needs prayer, don't leave this place without it. We love you. We're thankful for you. Have a wonderful day. Tell someone about Jesus today. Amen. Shine like, act like Jesus today. Hallelujah. Tonight, tonight, tonight.